Step one. The first thing that we need to do is set up an Ethereum wallet so we have a place to store our Ethereum after it's been mined. Open up your web browser and navigate to the site myetherwallet.com. Once we're here, we're going to enter a password in this box to create our new wallet. You want to make sure that this password is strong, and I would recommend that it's 16 characters long and uses a combination of uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers, as well as symbols. Before you type the password in here, I would highly suggest writing it down on a piece of paper and having it stored in a safe location. Once you've selected your password, enter it into this box. Hit Create New Wallet. Step 2. Now that our wallet's been created, we need to save a copy of our key store file, which gives us encrypted access to our Ethereum wallet. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to be keeping our key store file directly on our desktop hard drive. This leaves it vulnerable to hacking, and I would recommend removing it as soon as you have backups to your file. We're going to click the download key store file button, but instead of left clicking it, we want to right click it. Right click and then click save link as. We're now going to choose a location to store the key store file, and since we have other software to download, we might as well have a new folder to put everything into. Select your desktop or any other location that you can easily access. Right click and then click new folder. We're going to name this simply Ethereum. Once your folder has been created and you're positive of its location, double click it and we're now going to save our key store file directly into this folder. Click save. Once this is done, it's going to ask you to confirm that you understand, don't lose it, don't share it, and to make a backup. Click the I understand continue button. Step 3. We're now going to save our private key, which is another similar way to access our Ethereum wallet. Left click print paper wallet. It's going to show you all of your information here. Once you have this either printed or written down, move on to the next step. When you're done, close down this tab and then select save your address. Step four, we are now going to unlock our wallet so that we can access it. This gives us several different options. In our case, we have access to both the private key as well as a key store file. Select the key store file button and then select your wallet file by clicking this gray button, select wallet file. We are now going to navigate back to our desktop, find the folder that we called Ethereum, and then select our key store file. Click open. You are now going to be entering the password that we created earlier. Once your password is successfully entered, choose unlock your wallet. If you've done this correctly, your wallet will expand and show you all of the information that you would normally use when trading Ethereum. Importantly, it also shows your account balance as well as your transaction history. Once your wallet is unlocked, you're ready to move on to the next step. Step 5. We now need to download the appropriate mining software so that we can start mining Ethereum. This is sort of a complicated link, so I'm going to leave it in the description of this video. Open up that link in your browser. Within this, locate the latest version. You'll see that there are two different versions. Do not select the Linux version. Make sure that you're selecting this version. Right click the file, select download, and then select standard download. This site can be a little slow to get going, but just be patient. After a few seconds, you'll notice that the download has initiated within your download folder. Once it's complete, open up your download folder and then select the file that we just downloaded. The file will need to be unzipped. Select the Extract To button within your extraction software, and we're going to target the folder that we currently set up earlier in the tutorial labeled Ethereum. In our case, it was in the desktop and then in the folder Ethereum. Once you've targeted the correct folder, select OK. Once the extraction process is complete, you can close down your program. Now we want to navigate to the Ethereum folder. Minimize your browser and open up the Ethereum folder, and you'll see that Claymore's dual Ethereum folder is now within. Double click it, and you're going to see a list of all the files that were just extracted. Step 6. Now that we have our mining software downloaded, we need to join a mining pool. Open up a tab in your browser and navigate to nanopool.org. There's also going to be a link in the description of this video. You'll see that in Nanopool, they have pools for several different cryptocurrencies. Under the Ethereum box, select the button that says Quick Start. It shows basic information about the pool. Under the section that says How to Connect, 
select number three, generate your config. This is a generator that will help you select the best possible settings. Under operating system, select Windows. Under GPU vendor, make sure to select the type of card that you're currently using within your machine. For me, I'm gonna select Nvidia. The worker name can be set to whatever you like, but it's generally a default to set it as worker one or rig one. You can really name it whatever you want. In our case, we're gonna leave it as the default rig one. In the email section, you wanna put in a valid email address in case they need to contact you for some reason. Under the main server dropdown, select the server that's closest to your current location. In the first algorithm address, we need to put in the address of our Ethereum wallet. Navigate back to myetherwallet.com at the top of your browser. If you manage to close it, log back in as we did before. You'll see down under account address, copy your current Ethereum wallet address, hit control C to copy, go back over to the Nanopool generator, click the box and press control V to paste. This mining program allows you to mine two currencies at once, but I only wanna mine Ethereum, so for the second algorithm, I'm going to put none. Once you have this set up exactly like this, hit the button that says generate. You'll notice that a new download has been started. Once you see that happen, you can close this down. Navigate back up to the download folder and open up the file that says Claymore Config Nano Zip. Select the Extract To button. For the destination path, once again, we're going to select the folder that we created, in our case on the desktop, and then within the Ethereum folder. But we don't want it to just go into the Ethereum folder, we actually want it to go into the Claymore mining folder. Select that folder and then click OK. Currently within the Claymore folder, the file that we're extracting already exists. Essentially, we're overriding this file with a new config file that has our settings pre-configured. It's going to ask if we would like to replace the existing files. You want to hit yes to all. If you were to hit no, it would not copy over the old files and you would have incorrect settings. Once you've extracted the files, you can now close this down. Step seven. Now that we have our mining software configured correctly, we just wanna check that the changes we made to the config file have actually taken effect. Minimize your browser tab and navigate to your Ethereum folder. Within the folder, open up the Claymores folder. At the bottom of the folder, you'll see a file called start.bat. You wanna right click it and then select edit. If you use the configuration tool correctly, as well as extracted the file into the correct location, this start.bat folder is now going to contain your information. This address is going to be the address of your Ethereum wallet, followed by the name of the rig that you selected, as well as your email. If you see your information here, then you have done this process correctly. If you see anything else, you need to go back to the previous step and repeat it until this file is correctly set up. If it looks good, you can close it down. Step eight. Now we can start mining Ethereum. If you've done everything else correctly, all we should have to do is simply double click the start.bat file. Once you double click, a small command window will open and you're now mining Ethereum. You're gonna see different text scroll across the screen. The one thing that you're looking for are accepted shares, which are going to show up in green text. This number right here represents the current speed at which you're mining. As you can see, we have recently found a share, which tells me that our software is running correctly. Once you've started mining, the thing that most people wanna know is not only how fast you're mining, but how much Ethereum you've actually mined. To check on your progress and to see how much Ethereum you've actually mined, minimize the command prompt and open up your web browser. If you're still mining at this point, the web browser may open very slowly and depending on your computer, it might actually be unusable. Go to nanopool.org and in the Ethereum box, select overview. If you wanna check your own stats, the way that you find your address is by pasting your Ethereum wallet into the address bar and then hitting search. This shows relevant, useful information about the speed at which you're mining, as well as your balance of Ethereum. As you can see, we have mined a very small amount of Ethereum in the 20 minutes that we mined. In order to actually get paid over to your Ethereum wallet, this balance needs to hit 20% of a single Ethereum. That's gonna take the average small miner quite a long time. In order to change this, click on the settings button and you can see that the minimum payout is actually as low as five hundredths of an Ethereum, which is a much easier target to hit. 
Before you can make this change, it's important to know that you must have mined at least 10 shares worth of Ethereum. Not 10 Ethereum, just 10 shares. With my GTX 1070, I'm averaging 3 to 10 shares every 10 minutes. On average, mining 10 shares of Ethereum is going to take my computer about 30 minutes or so. Once you have reached that threshold, all you have to do to change your minimum payout amount is type the email address that you have entered in your bat file back when we did the configuration. For us, we used test email at gmail.com. Beneath that, simply put in the minimum payout threshold that you'd like. The lowest that you can enter is five hundredths of an Ethereum. We're going to enter that in now, that way we can get paid out a little bit more often. Once you have this entered in and you're sure about the 10 shares that you've mined, simply hit apply changes and after a second you should get a success message. I've done this successfully on my other account, so I do know that this in fact does work. However, on this test account we only mined about 4 shares of Ethereum and I'm sure that's why it's not working. Thanks for watching the video guys, I'm hoping that somebody out there was able to watch this and start mining Ethereum effectively. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. I usually do my best to respond to people. I am by no means a mining expert. In fact, I just got curious about all this stuff yesterday and through all my hours of research, managed to put together enough knowledge to make this video. If you've managed to start mining using this, let me know how you're doing. Let me know what your hash is. Let me know how much you're able to mine per day. I'm curious to see what other people out there are doing and the results that they're achieving. Thanks for watching the video and I will catch you guys on the next one.